Hello guys of United Rock Nations, we are with Matt of Grave Pleasures here at the Hellfest. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Very Good very to well. talk to you. Soon on stage? Yeah. Looking is is there it. any pressure? No, I'm pretty used to it by now. I'm quite excited about it. Great. So, uh, it's a new band. Yeah. Uh, tell me why uh, Beast Milk splits and why you decide to create a new band. I, I guess it's a you know a pretty typical story. Uh, our founding guitarist, co-founding guitarist, uh, I founded the band with him. Uh, we had different ideas about the direction of the band. Uh, he 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 wasn't so much into the touring and, and that kind of thing, and also didn't really want the other guys in the band to write music. It's just a difference of a of where we wanted to go with the bands, and uh, the rest of the band really wanted to carry on and and go where we are now. So we we did the thing we thought was the best thing to do and change the name and uh, you'd start a new chapter but it's so in a way it's a continuation in another way it's a new chapter uh, but it's uh, it's very exciting because the new lineup is the strongest lineup we've had for live and recording you know it's a very uh, the new album is, is is like a step on it's like a turning it up to 11 you know it's it's a uh, it's really new uh, next level stuff so yes we have heard some new uh, new yeah. songs five five songs we we, 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 we. it sounds that uh, The music uh, of uh, Grave Pleasure is less rock than uh, Beast Milk. Uh, um, I think it's more uh, new wave, uh, more melodic uh, than Beast Milk. That's what more powerful, more rock. Don't you think so? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess we've only put out five songs or something yes, like that. So they, they, exactly. it's very broad album uh, uh, with all the other songs. But I think that uh, we we wanted to have more textures, more more uh, depth to the album. And I think with with having climax already kind of nailed a certain sort of uh, level and area with the band, we wanted to expand on it. So it, it puts it into context when you see us live that you have the the climax al uh, album kind of songs mixed with the new ones. You really see what we were trying to achieve. You know, it's. Uh, It's creating a really good live set list, which uh, you know is like a journey for people, and you can experience all kinds of things there, not just you know the the banging rock songs. So uh, there are there are some really banging rock songs on the album, uh, <laughs> on the new one, but uh, we're kind of saving those ones uh, with the with the promo. We don't want to put everything out there immediately, but it's nice to be able to to expand on the vision and and give give people something a little bit more than than just uh, just a, a, a good rock album. I think we already did that with Climax. It would kind of be be sad if we. We repeated the same, went on the same ground. So it's kind of like you know, you see out one one view from one window, and you see a vista, and we're just opening the curtains to the other view, so you can you can widen the vision of, of where we're going with the songs. But for us, it's always just been about songs and songwriting. So it's like where the songs lead, that's where it goes. And uh, I think there's still very good, strong songwriting on the album. So we will wait until September <laughs> to yeah. listen to the other yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you change the name, so you change also the lineup. You you told me before. Uh, So tell me um, uh, when you you decide to join forces with Linea, uh, where do 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 you find her? Uh, I guess I guess when I first heard her album uh, that she made with the Oath, I, I really admired the songwriting, and I knew that you know the the, the basis of the songwriting had come from her, and uh, I, I was r you know really captivated by that that album, and uh, also loved her band uh, Sonic Ritual from the past. So I had been just briefly introduced to her through friends, and we hooked up at a festival. She'd been watching Beast milk and we we had an opening for a guitarist and I really wanted to bring her in because uh, I felt like we, we would really write good music together you know sometimes you just you just know it when you meet somebody that there's a spark there of, of being able to create something so it was kind of like that that uh, we just I just felt like this is the right person and yeah, I think that's how bands should be made you know you have to have that that spark that that like uh, it's 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 a uh, it's it's very it's very like um, hard to describe it's just this you just know like you're excited about working with this person this is the The person that I'm going to make music with, and I think I'm really glad that we made that decision because it really paid off. The new al record has a very, very magical way of putting the music together. So, so tell me about the the writing process. Um, the new the new songs are a collective work, or um, is is this is this one person that bring only the ideas? Uh, it's it's 50 50 between me and Linnea. I think uh, I brought you know half of the album. 
she brought the other half but uh, the the arranging kind of the, the finalizing of the songs a is a collective work so we we had a lot of work from Uno the drummer uh, on the drum arrangements and and kind of the, the arrangements of the songs and then also from our guitarist uh, Yuho from uh, uh, from Oransi Pazuzu and his other bands he came in and he really brought something special to the leads and uh, the guitar arrangements so uh, yeah it's a it's a collective work and um, something that we're quite proud of doing it that way that it's it's not just one person uh, controlling everything so dream crash what does it mean uh, I think it, it represents for us uh, a lot of different things but the, the main uh, the main concept to the album is is its breakup uh, but also new collisions so it's uh, you know it's a new it's a new start it's a, it's an explosion and a, and a, a crash of, of your past uh, dreams and your past hopes but uh, but an explosion into something new as well so so that's uh, that's kind of the in a nutshell. We have selected two songs of the five we have received yeah. um, and I want to talk about because we love yeah. a lot those two songs. Okay, uh, the first one is Girl in a Vortex. Uh, yeah. It sounds like an 80s new wave song. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me more about that song? Yeah, I, I was uh, Linnea brought the song uh, and uh, I really, well, what I heard in there was uh, a lot of different things that I, I kind of like took this Smith's uh, concept, a little play on the uh, Girl in a Coma and uh, I just, uh, I, I, I felt like the, the, the feeling and the vibes I was getting Getting from the music was was very despondent, but it was it's kind of like this this moment at which you're uh, where, where you're you're very lost and uh, you don't know where to turn, you know. And it's something that I, I felt that um, in in a way I, I from from my female friends from from talking to girls that there's this very uh, it's it's a very like uh, feminine uh, way of losing yourself, uh, and I wanted to explore that in in a song. I think it's a very un undiscussed subject uh, when uh, there's a lot of pressure on women and girls. Uh, especially in in, uh, in life and, and how it, that would be a, a very interesting subject to discuss in a song you know this emotional kind of breakdown um, and so so then uh, yeah I, I wrote it about about that uh, yeah it felt like it has a lot of Smiths a lot of 80s vibe in there a bit of cure as well yes exactly exactly uh, uh, the, other, the other song we love a lot is uh, uh, new hip moon yeah. it reminds me uh, joy division <laughs> yeah yeah I mean Joy Division, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a really big influence for us from the beginning and stuff. You know, it's a, a really great band. But I think there's a lot of different vibes in in that song. Uh, the Sounds, uh, a band called The Sounds, uh, a post-punk band from from the '80s, and um, I, yeah, it's uh, it's it's supposed to be a pretty it's a pretty hard-edged song, but it's also about a very strong emotion. You know, being very very captivated by by someone, and uh, you know, a lot of our songs are about that, about this whole uh, kind of lust, but uh, crush. You know. That, that, that kind of feeling that I think that bands don't really address so much you know you had it maybe with Guns N' Roses and stuff like that they brought it into rock and roll but it's kind of kind of sex and uh, sexual intimacy and the uh, feeling uh, you know the, the, those feelings of love which are um, that we, we're, we're discussing in our songs that people don't really bring into heavy music so much and I think we're trying to kind of open that up a little bit more um, we will see you in a few minutes, a few hours on, on stage at the Hellfest. Do you play also uh, Beastie Milk songs or just the new songs? No, we play we play Beast Milk songs. Yeah, it's it's kind of maybe 70, 80 percent Beast Milk stuff. Uh, those are my songs. I mean, they're really close emotional uh, contact with me. So we wanted to continue playing those songs. That's been the idea, you know, from the beginning. So yeah, we play a lot, a lot of Beast Milk. Um, we take a look at, at the at the concerts and the tour you will do after uh, in, in, uh, in September. Yeah. Uh, you will be only in France only for one gig, uh, uh, the 3rd of October in Paris. Yeah, one gig that, so far. Uh, that, that means that uh, uh, we, 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 we would like to have more gigs in France. Yeah. Can, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I think we're, we're planning on having some more. Uh, they're still a, in, you know, work in progress, so they're looking at other live dates. I'm sure that we will do some more. Even if we don't do it in this run, we're going to come back and play some more, because uh, France is a great place for us. It's, it's, uh, we, we've had a lot of... Uh, uh, we've had a lot of fans from France who are very engaging in the band and really into the stuff. So it's uh, it's really important that we come back and you know it's, uh, it's very uh, a place that's very close to my heart as well. So we, we have a lot of friends from France and I think this is a it's a good place for Beast Milk and uh, great pleasures in the future as well. 
what can we expect from the live shows of uh, of the band? Uh, it's a lot of energy, uh, but also I think uh, something that we feel we really need to do right now is is play those songs very well and uh, execute them very well to the audience. So that's something that we concentrate on a lot. Uh, I know it's, it might sound very boring, but it's uh, something that we didn't do in the past because we were a very fresh band getting together. We weren't so good live, and uh, we played a lot of shows where we probably didn't execute the material so well. So I really want to play those Beast Milk songs, uh, you know, the best that we could ever play them. And I think that's what we do with this lineup. We we play them very well. We have a, a lot of very experienced musicians, and it feels like the level is, is, is just going up all the time. Uh, and that's really important for me. So a bit of a lot of energy and, uh, you know, some, some surprises maybe on the way. Thank you, Matt, for uh, this interview. And uh, hope to see you in France uh, in October. Uh, and in a few minutes uh, at, at the Hellfest. Thank you. Cheers. Bye, guys. This is Matt Quast McNerney from Grave Pleasures, and you're listening to United Rock Nations. Rock on. <laughs>